First up this morning, at just 19 years old, Laura Schwartz volunteered answering phones at the White House. That's right. Then she climbed her way up the ranks to become White House Director of Events for the Clinton administration. Today, Laura joins us with her networking secrets to help us through the summer event season. She's a professional speaker, television commentator, and author of this book, Eat, Drink, and Succeed. You were on a little while ago, and I told you, I read your whole book. I oh, love you were just the best, Tiffany. And now, it's so great to meet <laughs> great you, Molly. To meet you this too. is I missed you last, last time. Last time you were here, I think I was on well, vacation. Well, that's why I'm back. Yes. <laughs> I, I love it. Molly. I, I think, love it. Because whenever I'm home in Plymouth, Wisconsin, you're just north of here, I watch you girls, and it is so much fun. And by the way, after my last appearance, I don't think as many people have said since I was an alternate network in the Piggly Wiggly in the neighborhood. <laughs> I saw you on Morning Piggly Wiggly. Wiggly. <laughs> saw you on TMJ. I mean, it was just a dirt. You have a great show. It's oh, really lovely awesome. to be back. Thank you. Great to meet you finally. That's fantastic. Fantastic. I know Tiff loved meeting you and loved your book, like she said. It was a fantastic book. I, I really think people can get a lot from it. But this is this is the time of year that people are going out to cocktail seasons. They're going to weddings. They're going to galas. They're doing all these things. What kinds of things can you teach people from your book or just in general take away today so that they can make it more successful? Yeah, it's, it's a big season out there from picnics to office parties yeah. to summer fest to that beer truck that's rock, you know going around Milwaukee today. <laughs> um, yeah. I came up last night to eat, drink, and succeed at Miller Park right. with some friends. At she, I, so too. I, too. I didn't see you. Well, unfortunately, they didn't win. You know, <laughs> I they, know. You know, obviously. I know. I have a friend who's at a lot of the games. He's like, every time you go, they lose. And it's like, I bring bad luck or see, something. I, I, we, we were talking as we left the box last night. I said, well, you know, at least we ate and drank a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good to eat, drink, and succeed. And with the summer party season coming up, there are a couple things to keep in mind. I always tell people, ask yourself, is it cocktail talk or your cocktail talking? Mm -hmm. Because What's the difference? Well, the difference is having one or two drinks, which is fine, relax, enjoy the conversation, but the three or four that get you into trouble. Because, you know, jokes the next day aren't funny if you don't remember them. <laughs> um, right. Or if the water cooler talk is all about you. Uh, you. Uh, because, you know, even though you're not on the clock technically and you're out at an office picnic or what have you, if there are peers from the office around, Hey, that's going to be discussed, and you never know when that next promotion comes up if that's going to be weighed and taken into consideration because it yeah. will. So, so stay away from drinking too much when you're with your peers. Especially. Yeah, and you have some tips for having fun, so enjoying mm -hmm. it without getting tipsy. Oh yeah, right? exactly. Hey, I always like to go up to the bartender, or I just have to really monitor myself. Whereas, like the first beer will be followed by a bottle of water, and right. then another beer, bottle of water, Alternate. and then I have to at some point just go all water. Or like I love vodka soda. <laughs> So the first one, I go up to the bartender, I want a vodka soda, but after this, I want them on the light side. You give them a little tip to start with, and then you're good for the rest of the night. It's mm -hmm. perfect. You kind of got yeah. an ally there at the bar for yes. you. Yes, mm -hmm. and I tell you, bartenders are great allies. <laughs> they in are. fact, they know when to say, yeah, I thought you were switching to a lighter vodka. <laughs> right. Yeah. right, yeah, they're keeping you honest, right? How about for, for especially new graduates, there's a lot of people mm -hmm. who just graduated, and they kind of walk this fine line between networking and stalking, <laughs> especially when it yeah. comes to being online whether it's finding mm -hmm. people on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on different places. How do you know that fine line, especially when you're young and you're ambitious and I aggressive? tell you, you frame it in such a great way because, you know, when we're out, you know, at, when you cross that stage of graduation, you're not mm -hmm. only taking your academic foundation, but your social foundation as well. But it's not going to be able to see how much you can drink at your happy hour or what right. you're going to post on Facebook. But when you RSVP to an event or you're going somewhere, ask around, see who else is going to be there. You can ahead of time go on their Facebook page, see what they're posting, see what's trending on their Twitter feed, mm -hmm. see what's on their LinkedIn professional background. And that way, when you meet somebody, you can organically use that in conversation. Right. Find your commonalities to start that foundation of a relationship. But don't start talking about their kids if you've never met the person before. Because <laughs> that's right. just creepy. creepy. That is just creepy. That is crossing the line. But it's a wonderful way to walk in, especially to uh, an, an organization or an event of which you're a party of one. And mm -hmm. maybe you feel a bit lost or you don't have that other one with you so you can go in there a bit more confident knowing maybe some kind of topic of conversation before you arrive I think I like that's that. great you remind us of something that Larry King once said he said I never learned anything <laughs> while I was talking, which and is a fantastic quote. It's all about listening. And I'm surprised, especially at parties, how, how much 
people will spend talking about themselves. Oh, isn't that something? Right? And, it's, and it's, it works well for us because mm -hmm. when I talk about networking, I talk about it in the fact that it's all about finding out what you can do for someone else. Uh, you know, not what can you do for me or what can I get from you, but what can I do for you? Well, we don't really know what we can do for somebody unless we're listening to them. And it's a wonderful opportunity to gather information and start making those bridges and those connections in your mind that you can offer to them because then it all comes back around you. So listening is a great asset. It also, quite honestly, can just be the best gift that you can give because sometimes people just want to be listened to. Mm -hmm. um, and that way, if you recall it then, I like to make little notes on the back of business cards mm -hmm. and that way when you follow up and follow through, maybe send that thank you note, not even just an email, but also a little note as well, maybe an article of something that they talked about. It's your sort of way to kind of prove I was listening to you and it leaves just an incredible impression. Mm -hmm. Well, don't you think then recalling it later and mm -hmm. saying, oh, this is what we talked about, you look like the, the like you have this great memory even if yeah. you don't. Well, and I'll tell you another tip. I create something and it's in the back of the book in a tear out sheet. Instead of just entering somebody's information like their email address, mm -hmm. physical address, right. name and company, under the notes section, I know on my Mac there's like this little note section, I'll write in there who I met, mm -hmm. um, what we talked about, do they have kids, what was going on, do they just move into the new job, whatever it may be, running their first marathon. And then the next time I do my research on who's going to be there and the name sounds familiar, I can just look them up in my contact book and oh, I can see what we discussed. So when I see them that afternoon, I'll say, oh, how's Jenna enjoying Michigan? How did Smart. the move go? And, so and they're, they're very impressed. What is your plus one or plus none rule? <laughs> this, is, this is kind of an etiquette thing, right? It is. Well, it's about the power of your date. And I tell you, it's either plus one or plus none. <laughs> because first of all, before you bring a date, or just any guest, a friend, whatever it may be, you want to make sure that you're invited with one. Because the right. last thing you want to do is just show up with an extra person, especially if it's a business-oriented dinner and everybody's seated to a T. Right. Um, and then number two, if you are invited with a date, bring the right one. You want your guests to add to the experience, not take away from it. And I have a feeling we've all dated guys <laughs> that we've taken to great events and they just are very upset when we don't have our mm -hmm. attention on them all night and, and have all the conversation with them. So you want somebody who can hold their own while you're having a conversation with somebody else. And, and maybe somebody that even has a commonality with the event that it's not just you're bringing a date, but you're bringing some Somebody that can also get something out of that event as well. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. We're almost out of time, but for, for people who are entrepreneurs too, and they're mm -hmm. having a networking event or a, a casual conversation, how are you able to turn it from casual into something that might benefit you? Is there like a switch? Because sometimes that switch can be awkward. You're absolutely tips? right, Tiffany, and that's mm -hmm. such a good point. I like to make that jump to business after the event. Good point. So you can leave the conversation by saying, hey, let's continue this conversation over a lunch, or let's mm -hmm. get coffee, or you know what, there's a great event next week that I think you'd really be interested in. Invite that person out, and then it has much more of a business context. When like people that. ask you, and, and like to say we ran out of time, but if people ask you to coffee and you're really not interested, <laughs> do you say no, or do you almost always, if you've met someone socially or at a business function, do you almost always say yes, at least for the first It meeting? really depends. Sometimes you can say, you know, I'm really busy for a coffee. You, but why don't we do a phone call? Okay. And you can do like That's a 20 nice. minute call with somebody. That way you're still giving them of your time and, and whatever information you can mm -hmm. share for them or shed the light on for them. And then, you know what? If it's really productive, have a coffee. But we all have to be mindful of our time at the same time because we are multitaskers and you're dropping off and picking up and running here and there. So you want to be considerate of others' times just as they'll realize that they have to be considerate of yours. Like Great it. ideas. Great book, too. Thanks. I want to make sure everybody knows how to get it. They can go to your website. It's LauraSchwartzLive.com to get the book Eat, Drink, and Succeed. Thanks, Laura. Thank you. Great to see you. Meet you finally. Great job. I love it. Well, we